This week on CrossFeed. Christians versus Satanists. Pastors versus the U.S. government. Kirk Cameron on the U.S. government. Do you know more about God than atheists? And hello, I'm a Mormon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, in the suburbs of Boston. We just had a wicked awesome weekend. Yeah. That's great. I have to warn everybody right now, I'm fighting a cold. So I'll be making. I say he has a wicked cold. Yeah. I'm going to be making liberal use of the mute button. Hopefully, I remember which way I have it. Um, but it's okay. Um, don't worry. I'm using a Macintosh, so you can't transfer viruses via Macintosh. So, uh, so you're all safe. <laughs> Somebody's going to, we're going to hear back from somebody. They're going to go, I watched it and I got sick the next day. <laughs> I would think people get sick every time they watch the show. <laughs> hey, I want to hi- do a highlight of a recommendation. I don't, we don't do, do this stuff very often, but if you are a Lutheran watching this, um, I really, really encourage you to order CPH's book, Lutheranism 101. I got my copy on Friday. From now through Reformation Day, it's a, Regularly $25, and it's $15 plus, of course, shipping and handling. So you can get a bunch of you together to buy it. Uh, then, of course, you can cut down, the, you know, the, the, that cost gets cut down. But it is basically a Lutheranism for dummies. That is the way it is laid out. It reminded me so much of the dummies books. Um, nice little squares, nice little text. It's funny in places. It has cute little comic strips to help illustrate things. They keep it, a lot of places that's written a very light tone. Um, and, uh, a wide variety of writers from different, a bunch of differing perspectives within the, uh, Lutheran Church and Missouri Synod. It's really cool to see them all gel in this book. Um, I, uh, uh, I teach an online class in Christian doctrine on a college level. I recommended to all my students, I said, you might as, you know, uh, uh next year, this is going to be another book I'm going to recommend. I know I'm going to require it could be a, a second requirement. It really is an excellent book. Um, and I just encourage you, if you are a Lutheran or you want to know what Lutherans are all about, uh, please, uh, uh, you order Lutheranism 101. So um, <clears throat> I haven't had a chance. I, I haven't ordered it yet. Um, I'm interested in it. I'm going to a pastor's conference uh, next week. By the way, no show next week. Um but uh the i'm i'm hoping the cph will have a booth there so i can actually get a hands on look at it um but here's my question what i was thinking about i've been looking for uh an alternative uh for a like adult confirmation kind of class um and i was wondering if this would work as a sort of um sort of follow its outline teach the class and then sort of use it as a take home that you could take it home and read it. Cause I mean, it's, there's a lot of pages to this thing. Um, yes, you very well could do that. Uh, number one, however, remember it's, you know, on regular price, 25 bucks a pop. So it gets a little expensive to do, to do that. You know, I mean, you know, if you're you know bringing in, you know, 10 or 15, 10 people, you know, you're talking 250 bucks. Okay. Whereas, if I'm bringing you know, in that many people, Hey, Bonus. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, under them to, you know, I mean, that's just a reality. They're, 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 it's not a cheap book. Um, there is more information than you would use in a class because there's like a, a you know, Luth- history of Lutheran history, Luth- history of Lutherans in America, and some other things. But I think for a lot of it, yes, you could do that. And pick up, but like Lord's Supper is like three or four chapters, and you know, I think you could easily do that. Okay. Um, yeah, it, um, so hopefully you'll see that. Uh, but well, you know what it doesn't have? It doesn't tell you who you should vote for. Oh. Uh, oh. Well, in that case. All right. So we've got, a um, seven pastors down in Tennessee that, um, have decided that they are going to take on the, uh, the IRS 
by endorsing candidates from the pulpit. Okay. Um, and uh, basically, yeah. they're they're saying eh, it's free speech. I should be able to, you know, to say whatever I want from the pulpit. And yeah, as they've been organized by a guy by the name of David Shelley, the pastor of Smith Springs Baptist Church, and he's going to endorse three. Would you believe Republican candidates? No. You know? A Tennessee evangelical church endorsing Republican candidates? What is this world coming to? <laughs> right. Interesting enough, by the way, one of the churches that is doing this it happens to be Lutheran, he said, and didn't say what kind of Lutheran or, or anything, uh, but something tells me it's not ELCA, and uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, um, its initials are Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. But I'm not <laughs> sure about that, but that's just a guess. Uh, okay. Dale and I have talked about this. And wrong answer. Bad idea. Um, I just think it's just churches should just stay away from. You just don't know. You know, you just don't know. Um, the guy can. You know, change his positions. The guy or gal change positions. They can have some serious moral lapses. Yep. Yeah, you know, that you don't know about. And you look really stupid for, you know, supporting this person. Right. Well, and more to the point, by doing that, what you're saying is, I mean, what I'm, what I'm getting from these churches is that they're saying, look, to be a Christian, you've got to be a Republican. Right. right. Um, and that's wrong. Jesus came and died for everybody. And American politics is messed up no matter who your candidate is. Right. As one guy said, uh, Richard Land, who uh, does covers this type of stuff for the Southern Baptist Convention, is, I'm supposed to, to minister to everyone. Period. Right. Uh, um, and, uh, so, you know, it's just a very, um, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, I, I, my older brother, um, who is in the army and, you know, not, never, was never happy with the Iraq war, uh, had a friend of his get killed, who was, he was right next to him as he was walking through Baghdad one time. And uh, he said, um, and he told me, he said, you know, the pastor that, you know, uh, the, the, pre the president, uh, he's my commander in chief, but I disagree, you know, and stuff. And her pastor says, you know, he he was God's chosen man to be president. Hmm. So, yeah, where yeah, does that put you? My, yeah, trying to get my brother to hear the gospel with that. And, you know, you know, no. Uh, OK, on the other hand, on the other hand, I have to say Barry Lynn from the American United for Separation Church and State. Okay. He said this was the worst idea ever. Okay. Um, um, you know, clergy serve as spiritual advisors, not political bosses. I think he's from Chicago, so I think he'd understand the idea of the political boss for sure. Pulpit politicking violates federal tax law and offends the majority of churchgoers. Uh, the nation's already bitterly divided over politics this year. Now, religious right political hacks want to haul that divisiveness into America's houses of worship. Okay. We're in trouble. Barry, you know what? Saying we're spiritual advisors, not political bosses, you, you're doing good. Um, saying it violates tax law, yeah, probably does. I don't know if it offends the vast majority of church goers. You can't say if it does or not because, you know what, I've known a lot of black churches that have had political speakers in their buildings and stuff, and nobody's minded, and it was real obvious. That, okay, that it wasn't an endorsement, but it was just about. I mean, it was just, right. you know, and, they, they, and, you know, they've had, you know, uh, a, you know, people of a certain political persuasion there a lot more than others. But, man, um, you know, when you start using the term right, a religious right political hack, yeah, yeah, you just got a pejorative, non, not helpful language. Talk about uh, bitterly devi divisive language. Right, right, no kidding. Um, 
And you know, but that brings up an like you know anything, you're religious, right? Political hack. <laughs> um, the the fact that this stuff has been going on for a long time. Um, you know, you look at uh, like Jim mentioned, uh, a lot of black churches have you know endorse don't actually endorse, but um, it's their service ends up being basically a political rally for the uh, for a particular candidate. Uh, which is usually Democrat. So it's happening on both sides of the aisle. Uh, it's been happening for a long time on both sides of the aisle. All right, but here's the thing. Um, the people that are doing this, they say, this is a pastor's right of free speech. All right? Yes, a pastor has a right to free speech. Everybody has a right to free speech. Nobody's saying you can't say this. All right? What they're saying is you can't expect the um, the IRS to rubber stamp it and give you tax exempt status for it. Because political um, organizations are taxed, and uh, and you can't expect tax exempt status uh, if you're going to act like a political political organization. You want to act like a church? Fine, you know. And frankly, we it's not like we even have the right to tax exempt status as a church. We enjoy that privilege, but that's a privilege, not a right. I am not at all, and you know, I, yeah, it's they're absolutely free, absolutely free mm-hmm. to go out and say whoever they want to be president, uh, a president or congressman or mayor or whatever else. But um, I don't think that it's wise to do that in a, um, um, you know, from the pulpit. Um, you know, if you want to do that, fine, you know, go, you know, send a letter to your congregation or something. Uh, yeah, but, but, uh, you know, the pulpit is, is a place where we proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Right. And no political person is going to be our Savior. Um, and that's all there is to it. And that's not the purpose of what the church is all about. And, um, uh, that's just, you know, and I have some real, Issues of of churches that get caught up in in more wor- in, in those in those types of worldly things. Don't put your trust in princes. You know the Bible says that over and over and over. Well, guess who our princes are? So you're going to preach trust in them? I mean, that's unscriptural. That's just ridiculous. So you know, and you know what it comes down to is: look, you have the opportun- the opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And you're wasting your time talking about some political candidate that may or may not keep their campaign promises and may or may not be the person that you expect them to be. Right. I'm sorry. I go with certainty. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But now you said don't trust in princes. But what if they are the church of the four crown princes? <laughs> Oklahoma City. I've uh, got a... This group that Jim just mentioned, the Church of the Four Crown Princes, is a Satanist organization that is going to be meeting at the Civic Center. And <clears throat> so a couple churches have decided to have demonstrations there. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, Olivet Baptist Church and the City of Refuge Church of God in Christ. And uh, let's see. So the, the Baptist Church is having a prayer vigil outside the Civic Center. <clears throat> they got a permit for it. And then uh, the other one is going to be distributing tracts. Um, so uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the James Hale, the leader of the Church of the Four Crown Princes. said members of his church have made pledges to pay the remaining amount due to the Civic Center to lease a small room in the building. He said the church also is selling tickets to the event which is to include an exorcism. Hale said the exorcism is a parody of the Roman Catholic Church's rite of exorcism. All right. So <clears throat> this the Satanist group is meeting there, and really their purpose is to point out people's misunderstandings um, of what Satanism is really all about. Um, <clears throat> and... Honestly, I think that a lot of people misunderstand what Satanism is all about. All right, most satanic groups is at least like the Church of Satan and uh, you know Anthony Levey and or Anton, I mean Levey and and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
they don't actually believe in the existence of a personal devil. No. Um, they're basically atheists. And it's really more the church of sort of um, get what hardy, you can hardy. while you can. And yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's a sort of nihilistic. Uh, it's it's sort of the modern day version of Epicureanism. And, um, yeah, sure. eat, drink, marry for tomorrow we die. Yep, that's pretty much it. But beyond hedonism, but really, yeah, I like your word nihilism. It, you just, there is no meaning. There is no purpose. Eat, drink, be merry, because tomorrow we are kicking the can. So, you know, go out and who the hell cares otherwise. That's kind of the attitude. Right, right. So, um, so it's not like, you know, killing puppies and, you know, burning no. them and, you know, stuff like that. No, that's not what Satanism is. No. That's, that's and, what, uh, you know, high school kids do when they're <laughs> trying to rebel and, and be evil or something. Or I've seen too many movies. Right. I mean, <sighs> This is just a, I don't know, I look at this again and it's like, as a church, who cares? You know, you have a small room in the civic center, you know, you're not getting, you're not getting the big, you know, thing. you're not filling this thing up. Um, you know, go, go, you know, whatever your game is, go play it. Uh, I think, you know, I hate to say it, I think, you know, the, these pastors are really just kind of playing right into their hands. You know, they're sitting back going, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, you know, yeah. If if you know, you don't take a stand against things like this, you'll be surprised what's coming to Oklahoma City. You know, mm-hmm. oh, why do I hear? Why do I hear in my mind the Music Man? We have trouble right here in Oklahoma City. <laughs> you know? Oklahoma trouble. Which time with T? That is. Before the letter that which which is follow which follows the letter S, which stands for Satan, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, why, why do I just hear that? You know, the you know that riff going through my mind. I mean, <laughs> and you know, and that's the whole thing is they're giving these guys publicity. Yep, that's know? the other side. Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking earlier. All you're doing is just playing their hands. You're giving them publicity. Right, and that's what they want is publicity. So. Yeah. Congratulations, you know, because then what's going to happen is people, oh, what's all the hubbub about, you know, and then, oh, well, let's interview the, you know, and now the, instead of just some group that rented out a room and is meeting there, now they're going to be on the local television. Now now they've got, you know, podcasters talking about them. (laughs) Wow. To both of of the fans at the same time, you know, so, but no, it reminds me kind of, yeah, I mean, you know, the, guy, the one guy's like, oh, they're peaceful, you can go through one, it's public property, that's one of the, the, the that crown four princes said. You know, I, I mean, it reminded me of when I was in Springfield, and uh, Marilyn Manson uh, was in, uh, came to, to play, and um, so one time in his concert, he said, there are people out there protesting me, saying that I'm a Satanist, and, you know, I got it, and things like this. And the guy in the paper very dryly noted, the only problem with that was there's nobody standing outside the theater protesting him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, no, no, you know, nobody's paying any attention to it. You know, there, there wasn't anybody out there doing that. Right. Um, we, you know, I just ignored him. You know, go play your little game, whatever it is that you happen to be. Uh, there's also though that it was kind of interesting because there's another situation I was reading about where he was in concert in the city and the, you did have a church out there protesting and youth group carrying signs and stuff, you know, and uh, another church van pulls up and they open up the back of the church, the, the van, open up coolers and start handing out Mountain Dews to all these people who are standing out in the hot sun waiting to go to the concert. And they're like, what are you doing? He goes, well, you look hot and thirsty. You know, it's, you know, you're waiting out here, you know, it's, you know, in the sun, you know, you're probably getting dehydrated. That's what you might like to do. You know, uh, you know, who are you? Oh, we're people from, uh, you know, whatever church. And, uh, 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 why aren't you protesting? Well, we think you probably look thirsty. You probably wouldn't get, you know, get, get, get any drier out, you know, 
take, taking care of watching us carry signs. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we don't really care about his music. We care about you. Yeah, he yeah. can do whatever he is. We're, we're concerned about who you are. Um, if he wants a Mountain Dew, he can come out and we'll give him one. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, and it was, you know, uh, uh, and, you know, obviously, which, which group really had the impact on the people standing in the line? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, you know, and it wasn't what... the people. This is what the, the book of Proverbs talks about, talks about heaving burning holes, you know. You know. And these guys are just, you know. Uh, uh, um, so I, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, just, just, I would just ignore them, let them play their games. Who cares? No, I, I thought at least the churches are not sort of making a big stink. They're just sitting together to pray. All right. Right. It's obviously a, you know, a protest of sorts. Okay. It's an expression of disagreement or whatever. Um, but it seemed like a pretty mild one at least. Right. And, and you know, and, yeah. and, if, get- and if people are asking them and they're saying, well, you know, we're praying for the people inside, you know, because we care about their souls. You know, I, I think it, it could be done well. Um, but yeah, I think in general, it's probably just better to ignore them. It's, you know, the, cause the reality is Satanism is not what most people think it is. So. Right. Well, and the other thing is that the news people are going to show up and they're going to show this meeting inside and they're going to show these people out there praying and, you know, and they're going to make the people outside praying look like the kooky ones. Right. So, you know what, you know, you know what the crown four princes need to do? What's that? They need to come up with some really cool cat webcasts and they at the end and say, and I'm a Satanist. <laughs> All right. So, by the way, at the beginning of the show, Jim said that he's a Mormon. He's not. <laughs> uh, but there are a bunch of people on TV um, on a, an ad campaign that are. Uh, it's a, a new ad campaign that's being run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. And, um, and basically it shows different people like, um, you know, surfing and, and whatever, and just showing themselves to be regular, normal, everyday people. And then at the end they say, and I'm a Mormon. Yep. Um, <laughs> I had a laugh though, because one of them is this 20 something woman, you know, gushing about the love of her life and saying, and I'm a Mormon and a black man, an entertainer, and musician raves about fatherhood and family and I'm like, yeah, and um, so whatever happened with that uh, a bad angel thing there? Yeah. <laughs> the old <laughs> neutral angel priesthood thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, we don't I'm, talk about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> what? We don't talk oh. about that. <laughs> so, um, okay. You know, I, I mean, this is, let's face it, the Mormons are good at PR. Um, you know, that's one thing that said something about this is that it says something here about the fact that, you know, they, they weren't good at it or they'd gotten, they'd taken it on the chin or something. And I thought, yeah, you're right. They've always been good. Um, I remember a few years ago, the, um, LCMS set out, uh, some, some ads that were very well done that they were showing on, on, uh, cable. And, uh, I was very impressed by it. You know, when I saw it, I saw it, I thought, wow, this is good. And one of the guys who was, uh, one of the vice presidents of the Senate said, people are often asked, why can't we have cool looking commercials like the Mormons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And that's the thing is they, the Mormons do a good job. I mean, you know, if you think about the fact, you know, the, the sort of facts of Mormonism, if people actually knew the details of what it was about, you know, they'd be going, what? You know, and, um, and because they use that sort of, uh, like, okay, we'll, we'll tell you this much about us. And then once you've accepted that, we'll, then we'll tell you a little more and then we'll tell you a little more, you know? And, um, and, and I say that because I've had that happen to me. Um, I've been on the receiving end of that. So <clears throat> I'm not saying they always do that or, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe they've changed their methods in the past 20 years, but, um, I mean, the, you know, there's a lot of, and granted, Christianity, you know, we talk about God becoming man and, you know, rising from the dead and all that kind of stuff. So it's not that our um, teachings are, uh, you know, somehow uh, naturalistic or something like that. But 
um, you know, they, what they do is, is they're not saying this is what we believe and teach. They're saying, look, you know, we're not, I think what they're really saying is we're not polygamists, <laughs> you know, trying to get rid of, because they've got a lot of, um, oh, well, all they care about is proposition eight and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. See, yeah, I see. I was wondering if the the, fam- the 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 new family is talking about being on uh, uh, the Learning Channel, where it's the, the fundamentalist Mormon who's got the four wives, three wives, and gay to bring in wife number four. Um, yeah, I wonder if those people are going to have blindfold, you know, dark glasses on all the time or something, so people don't know who they are. Uh, otherwise, you know, they're going to get arrested. But anyway, I heard but, he was indicted. Uh, no, I did okay. Yeah, that, that would like I don't know why you would. Anyway, but beyond that, as it may, I mean, you know, I have my four wives, and I'm a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not right. No. So, no, I mean, you know, it, just to be clear, and I, I think this is important. Um, all right, Mormons, people think of polygamy, they think of Mormons. And while the, you know, this sort of fundamentalist group that we heard about a lot on the news a year or two ago, um, you know, this is, this is like a, um, a, just this little offshoot. Um, sort of the equivalent of, of like what the Amish are to, to Christians or something like that. And, um, so they're most Mormons, Mormons got rid of, of polygamy like a hundred years ago. Um, although, which is kind of interesting because Joseph Smith said that this is a fundamental doctrine and should never, must never change or something like that. And then they changed it, but that's what you can do when you have continuing revelation uh, well, God changed his mind, so now we're getting rid of it. Okay. Too bad. Too bad they, yeah, you know, they didn't have you know the California Supreme Court, you know, ruling in its favor in those days. <laughs> now they could, uh, you know, they could just tell us just an alternative lifestyle. Hey, no, no problem here. Go yeah. ahead for it. Yeah, that's the I, irony. And sir, yeah, you serious think about it. You know, if you look at it, uh, 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 if, um. You know, if, if 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 gay and homosexual marriage is allowed, why why can't you have polygamy? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing is the Mormons in in the Prop Eight thing, they're saying that you know, one man, one woman, that's God's um, definition of marriage. And a hundred years ago, or or more, when they were actually um, when they when they were fighting for the right to polygamy. They were saying that the polygamy is God's definition of marriage, you know, and uh, so they've yeah you know, they've done a one eighty on what God teaches, you know. They've actually completely changed that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of ironic uh, that you compare what they're saying, you know, in the past year and, and what they're saying a hundred or so years ago. I'm I'm not sure exactly what the dates are on that, but it was roughly that. So. But maybe we don't even know what we're talking about. Maybe we need to get an atheist on this show who does know what he's talking about. There you go, because they know a lot more about this kind of stuff than we do. Um, this was now, really I'm gonna fascinating. I'm going to talk more about this because I, I didn't get a chance to talk about. I didn't get a chance to read this whole okay. article. It was really long. All right, yeah, it is kind of long. Uh, it's the the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life. Uh, they do these surveys on a pretty regular basis about. Um, religious beliefs and attitudes and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, so the gist of this, uh, survey that they did where they, what they did is they called, um, I don't know, a couple thousand people, something like that. I think it was 1800, but I can't find the number right now. Um, and they said, they asked him a bunch of questions, which were mostly multiple choice. All right. Asking them, about uh, like history of religions, religious teachings, things like that. Like, um, you know, who uh, who uh, started the Protestant Reformation, right? Um, what do Roman Catholics teach about uh, uh, Holy Communion as far as the um, whether it's symbo- a symbolic presence or a uh, or an actual presence of Jesus' body and blood and um, just all kinds of questions. What, uh, what's the, the prominent religion in, um, oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank. We talked about this country last week. Um, 
Indonesia. Indonesia, thank you. My cold is messing with me. Um, and questions like uh, about Hinduism, uh, Judaism, and uh, Mormonism. There are actually quite a few questions about Mormonism, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, what they found was that the highest scores on this test, basically, um, on average, Americans correctly answered 18 or 16 out of 32 religious knowledge questions. Um, and the ones that did best on the religious knowledge questions, atheists and agnostics. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. So um, they averaged uh, 20.9 20, 20. Um, on this. And uh, the Jews are next, then Mormons, then white evangelical Protestants, white Catholics, white mainline Protestants. Nothing in particular. Then black Protestants. Then uh, Hispanic Catholics. So why do you think that is? Well, for one, I think that this question of, you know, what do you believe in that kind of thing? Or what do these churches believe? Um, my, my, my first question is, the people that you interviewed, are they practicing? Or does that just mean their name is on a book somewhere? Uh, but um, honestly, I, I think that a lot of atheists, with all the the sort of new atheist movement and stuff like that, um, you know, there is a lot of sort of looking at what do churches teach and, and things like that. But it also, they also found that um, the more educated people were, the better they did on this test. And um, and a lot of atheists are. Um, are highly educated. And, and we've talked about that before. Not that Christians are not, um, but there's a, you know, if you pick a, an atheist, chances are, and, and I'm talking an atheist as opposed to nothing in particular, that was a separate section, but someone who's a, you know, a devout atheist, I'm not sure you could use that term, but, um, you know, they, they know what they believe or don't believe, and they know why. And so a lot of them have looked into various religions, and I think a lot of it, they love, they've looked into it so they know what to pick on, you know. So, oh, well, you're going to pick on Lutherans. Well, let's talk about Martin Luther and how much he hated the Jews and, you know, and, and whatever, stuff like that. So let's talk about the Crusades. Let's talk about the Spanish Inquisition. So the Mormons, they did well, honestly. Uh, well, they did really well on Bible knowledge, too. But a lot of the questions were about Mormonism, so I'm not surprised that they did well on those. Why do you ask questions to which you already know the answers? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I mean, you know, in a sense, it's kind of embarrassing, and, and it shows something that I've said for a long time, and, and that is church rises and falls on catechesis. Um, we need to teach people the basics of the faith. Um, people need to know their history. Church, and that's something else. A lot of these were church history questions. Churches don't teach church history. I mean, we don't. Well, I think a lot of that's, well, a baby boomer and even Generation X. And, and, and just this idea that if, if it didn't come in our, our day and age, it's really not worth studying. That Americans have that view of, you know, Henry Ford, that history is more or less bunk. Where did you dig up that old fossil? When I was in fourth grade, I did a paper on Henry Ford. And, and I, I wrote the whole thing around that idea that history was bunk. And I basically just talked about the uh, the irony that I was being forced to write a paper, a, a history paper on someone who said history is bunk. <laughs> Yeah, it was obnoxious way back then. <laughs> so, I don't know. Let's let's move on from this topic here. I don't know what else we can say about these folks and what they know or don't know. 
But you know what? They'd be really cool if Kirk Cameron, if they asked Kirk Cameron some of these questions. Show me that smile. Ooh, show me that smile. Hey, I'm doing good segue tonight, people. I, I'm in the segue groove tonight. He's rocking. I'm feeling miserable, so. I'm rocking. I'm, I'm, I'm carrying this show tonight, folks. I tell you, I, I'm doing, I know I'm doing 80, I, I want 80% of the royalties this week. Okay. Agreed. <laughs> I'll give you 90. <laughs> cool. That's right. That's what I like to hear. You know, I want those, I want those webcast residuals, man. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they start coming, I'm in. going on strike. Otherwise, buddy, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to go. You know, I'm going to start picketing till I get you know get my share of the residuals. <laughs> we'll tell you what. How about uh, as soon as it as soon as it totals up enough, I will use that money to buy you a copy of Monumental, a doctor a documentary made by Kirk Cameron that traces God's influence on the formation of America. Cool. Where's that when hell freezes over? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just, uh, yeah, I, it's been a long weekend, folks, um, and I'm a little bit punchy here tonight. But anyhow, um, so Kirk Cameron's probably the most famous, most outspoken Christian in Hollywood right now. Um, he, um, it's unless it, you know is Willie Ames still Christian? I haven't heard from him in a long time. I haven't heard from him since he did his Bible Man stuff. But anyhow, so um, he um, he did um, Left Behind. He's done the Fireproof movie, and uh, uh, and he's got this Christian TV program, The Way of the Master. And anyhow, he's been um, uh, coming up with this uh, documentary called Monumental, which tracks the influ- God's influence in the formation of America. Um, they're retracing the footsteps of our founders from England to America and hope we're discovering our true national treasure that we can re- use it to restore our country. Okay. <laughs> this is, we should have done this one in connection with the, uh, um, the pastors preaching endorsing candidates from the pulpit. Yeah, man, but the Crown Four Princes were so much cooler. Yeah, I don't know. Segway fail, man. I don't um, know. <laughs> all right. So, um, I like Kirk Cameron. He's a fun guy. Um, I disagree with, you know, I'm not into the whole left behind thing. And, um, although Fireproof is an awesome movie that I highly recommend. I've done that before on the show. Um, but, uh, There's this idea that that the U.S. used to be Christian, and it never really was. I mean, there are certainly a lot of Christians in um, key positions. Uh, you have to at least say you're Christian uh, to be uh, to ever get elected president here, uh, and uh, there's certainly a, a large Christian influence. On our society, and and I guess if he's trying to <clears throat> point out that influence, okay, that's fine. Um, but at the same time, it could be argued that uh, you know uh, someone who's not favorably inclined toward Christianity would say, well, there shouldn't be such a big influence, you know. Mm-hmm. So saying there was at one time a big influence. Um, I guess I'm not sure what the message is that he's trying to convey. There is a message for you. Or, you know, kind of, what's your point? Right. It's, it's you know, again, it's just almost this idea that we were a Christian nation, and we've lost our Christian foundation, but we were never, you know, and, I, and I'm sure this, he's going to be quoting the guy who says, you know, if you don't understand the Bible, you know, American law will never makes sense, and you know, those types of things. But, you know, real, reality-wise, you know, we've always had separation of church and state. Um, you, know, you know, the Congress has never, you know, I know the phrase, you know, the wall of separation, I know it's not, you know, not in, in the uh, uh, Constitution. I'm perfectly aware of that. But, you know, we've always had this idea, that, you know, con- you know that, that, that 
that, you know, Congress doesn't pass any laws on the church. And, um, you know, we pray for our country, we pray for our leaders, but, you know, American civil religion is not Christian. Right, right. You know, and that's something they bring up, uh, like Glenn Black, uh, Glenn Beck, um, and his, uh, his, his new stuff. And, um, there's, there's a nice quote here. Uh, this is when I see Glenn Beck or whoever, be they Jew, Mormon, Catholic, anyone saying we need to wake up because socialism is hurting our country. The economy is suffering. I think that's a good thing. This is from, um, Kirk Cameron. I almost called him Mike. Um, my trust is not in Glenn Beck. It's not in my personal heroes of the faith. It's in Almighty God who will work to bring about good, even by using Beck, because he recognized that Beck's a Mormon. All right. But the thing is, what do socialism, um, the economy, what does that have to do with theology, you know, with Jesus and the cross? Uh, probably nothing. You know, I, it was interesting. Today I was walking in Boston, and I, I walked by King's Chapel. Now, King's Chapel is an interesting building, um, and I think it's still the original building. It, the church has been around for 325 years. It was the first Anglican church, permanent Anglican church in America. It also was the first Unitarian church in America. Huh. And they tell, they, 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 uh, uh, if you read their stuff, they say that we are a Unitarian church of the Christian tradition. Uh? Isn't that sort of contradictory? Well, it is not really. If you look at, you know, I mean, essentially they're very much where, you know, that, that, that God exists and that Jesus is a great moral teacher. And they have a very strong emphasis on who Jesus is. But you know, they don't really that, that, get the he, point of who Jesus is? No, that's right. But, you know, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, but you, know, you should take Jesus very seriously, you know, and, and stuff. So, but that's what they call themselves, okay? I'm just, I'm just, okay. And if I look at American civil religion, that's essentially what it is. The Unitarianism with a Christian tradition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In that same sense. Yeah. So. And, uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and that's, uh, um, yeah. On the other hand, you know, this guy just talks about, you know, cameras says, you know, I can probably relate to people mocking Christians. I used to do it myself before I came to Christ. Um, I don't know. A clip from his show, The Way of the Master, which Cameron listens to co-host Ray Keller argued the design of banana is evidence for creation over evolution. I haven't seen that, but something tells me it, it's one of those things where you, you know, the, the somebody was sitting back going, "Oh, please don't do this." Well, I imagine that, that what they're probably trying to point out is the um, the what do you call it, irreducible complexity. Probably, but I don't know. I don't want. I just wonder what is a little scary. But, yeah, you know, anytime you're going to do something like that, you want to run that past some, you know some biologists and things like that. And, you know, before you go public with it, here's what you do. Here's what I do. All right. You run it past some atheist friends, right? And say, how would you respond to this? And, and they say, well, your argument's faulty here, here, and here. And you go, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> you know? Um, so I either need to uh, augment my argument or else just forget about it. So, I'm not sure how many atheist friends Kirk Cameron and Ray Cutler have. So I don't know, but they're a handy resource. It's also a great opportunity to talk to them about Jesus at the same time. So, um, you know, there was one quote that that sort of jumped out at me, sort of unrelated to what he's all talking about, but um, it says uh, there wasn't a whole lot of opposition in the first 50, 100 years of our nation's existence. Now with secular humanism and a new militant atheist, you have people trying to make it sound like Christians are a joke. It's a wake-up call today. It's a call to man up. All right. To some degree, um, there's some truth to this. All right. Um, not that I think that that these the new atheism movement is all that big. It's very vocal. They've got some some good talking heads, um, 
but I don't see him being super influential. Um, and but at the same time, here's here's how sort of, and and I, I'm hesitant to use the word persecution, all right. But here's as far as how the church is being treated. It's a, I might call it a candy coated persecution. All right, we're gonna um instead of you know feeding you to the lions we're just going to make jokes about you and stuff like that and and see that way if um if you if you respond in anger or anything like that uh then we can say oh you know we can point at you and and say look at the the silly man jumping around and screaming at us all right or if you go aha uh-huh, funny you know then they'll say oh see you know, they agree with us and we're attacking them and they agree with us, you know? And, um, so it's the idea is not to get rid of Christianity, but to make it look completely irrelevant. And that's what we're dealing with as a culture. Um, while the, the new atheist movement has, has sort of capitalized on that, um, that's already been going on. They're just sort of jumping on the bandwagon. Um, and that's what we're dealing with when you talk about outreach evangelism, um, you know, anything like that, that we've got, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the Mormons are really good at PR. Most of the church, not so much. Um, and, and while you might be good at, at PR in the sense of logos or fancy, um, uh, commercials or, or something like that, uh, when it comes to actually connecting with people, you know, as Christians, we tend to be more comfortable picketing than we are going in and just talking to that non-Christian friend of yours um, and saying, you know, hey, what do you, how you doing, get to know them, um, you know, if, and and then when the opportunity presents itself to share the gospel with them in a natural way, um, you know, in a way that they need to hear it. As uh, Philip Yancey in his book, um, the book Jesus I never knew before points out that many of the people that flocked to know Jesus would feel very uncomfortable being anywhere near our churches today. Yeah. Uh, and we would feel very uncomfortable with them being there. Yeah. So I think you know, it's, that, that's an interesting thing. You know, as I said, you know, we're, we're often more interested in arguing with people or banning people or pointing out their sin or than realizing what Paul said, you know, of all sinners, I am the chief. That Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Right. But be, you know, but he saved me that I might be the example of his, uh, um, what was the word he uses? Uh, limitless love and patience for all people. Now, that's a powerful thing. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And that's what we need to be sharing. And, you know, I I don't know. You want to argue that we've left our Christian moorings? Uh, maybe we have as a country. I don't know. I mean, you know, we've, you know obviously Harvard has. Uh, but, you know, um, it's something I'm just not going to worry about because we just got to do it. The way you do it is not by making a, a, a documentary and hoping you wake up masses. It's by touching individual people. Mm-hmm. Yep. One at exactly, but that's a lot harder. That's a oh. lot more work. Yeah, that's real work. Hey, by the way, I don't know, man. Did uh, any of you people want to reach out and touch us? You know, with 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 with, with a note. Uh, you can always do that at crossfeed at po- uh, uh, podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Uh, you can also uh, comment in our uh, YouTube. We'll get that back. And, um, you know, we always value your feedback and your uh, things. Listener mail is a great thing to get. Mm-hmm. Um, any other comments or anything for tonight, my friend? Yeah, I have to share one thing. This is something sure. really cool. All right. Um, so <clears throat> I had this, this evening I had um, uh, uh, marriage premarital counseling uh, with a couple. And then right after that, I had Bible class. And... Um, so it, it's been raining pretty steady around here, but it, it wasn't raining when I went over there. So I didn't take my umbrella. Now my office is like what, 30 feet or so from, you know, my back door. Um, but after Bible class tonight, my wife shows up under her umbrella 
carrying another umbrella, hands it to me so that I would have an umbrella to walk home. And and I was just, I was really touched. My wife is awesome. Everybody that was there went, huh. <laughs> and, um, and so, um, she's sitting next to me and I'm probably embarrassing her, but, um, I'm just, you know, I love my wife. She's awesome. And, and I'm just, that, that was like the highlight of my night. I just have to share that. So, um, but yeah, I've just, you know, thanks everybody for, for watching and, um, and, uh, invite you to, uh, you know, if you, if you're, if you're watching this on, uh, YouTube or one of the other, um, video sharing sites, I want to let you know that we do have a, uh, podcast feed. If you go to crossfeednews.com slash podcast, um, you can subscribe there. The video quality is a little better. Um, and, uh, and then you can just automatically get the episodes or, you know, we've got some people that just subscribe to our episodes, uh, right on those video sharing sites. You can do that. Um, and, uh, and we just about every week we've got a new show out. So, um, so, but no show next week, but definitely love to hear from you, offer your insights on any of the stuff we talk about or, or whatever's on your mind. So thanks a lot. Night, everybody. God bless.